kids, you're going to love watching all the giant construction equipment on this video. But while you're watching, remember, in real life, construction equipment can be very dangerous. So be safe. Never ever go near a construction site or any place else with a stranger. Never play near a construction site. You can only go to a construction site if your parents go with you and the site manager says it's okay. Okay? Good. Now let's watch these giant monsters in action. Monster over there? Yeah. That's a 520 horsepower D10 bulldozer. Big as a house! A house? Yeah. Hey. One of the workers must have left this old thermos behind. Pretty beat up. Still something in it. Yeah, Rose probably rotten, stinky chicken soup. I gotta get a bigger thermos. Who, who are you? Well, looks like I got two masters this time. Pleased to meet you. Hard Hat Harry's the name, but some people call me the construction worker's genie. I'm Max. He's Alex. We're kids. Human big kids. You live in here? Do now. First 5,000 years, I lived in an old lantern. But I traded that in for this thermos. Better insulation. <laughs> oh, the outfit's changed a bit, too. <laughs> hmm, much better. You mean you're a real genie? The kind that grants wishes and stuff? Genie Deluxe. Granter of wishes of all shapes and sizes. Nothing's too tough for Hard Hat Harry. As they say in Genie Land, your wish is my command. How many wishes do we get? Well, it used to be three, but seeing as how you're human being, kids, maybe I can throw in a couple extra. You can do really big wishes? Go ahead. Try me. I'll buy us all. all the money in the world. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a huge wish, Hard Hat Harry. We want to see the biggest, best, most Awesomest construction equipment there is in the whole wide world! Busted bulldozers! Well, why didn't you say so? Mm, we might have to travel a bit. Are you boys carrying your flying carpets? No. No? Oh. Well, then I'll just have to sprinkle you with some magic gravel. Here, you better put these hard hats on. Magic gravel can be a little rough on the old noggin. Okay, guys, close your eyes. Hmm. Pebbles and gravel and soil and stone. This is Hard Hat Harry, and I'm not alone. Max and Alex are here with me, and gigantic equipment is what they want to see. So give us the power to fly far, far away and show us the big stuff and show us today! Well, looks like we got the big stuff, all right. Yeah, big hole. That hole took months to build, Alex. And when it's done, a giant skyscraper will be built here. Watch out! The big bulldozer's coming this way! Big machines like bulldozers that dig up soil, rock, and sand are called excavators. You can see the front pusher blade on this dozer and the special triangular tracks, or crawler treads, that give it better traction and gripping power on dirt and mud. A single bulldozer can do the work of hundreds of men with shovels in a lot less time. Cool, a big bucket puller! That's called a treco, stupid. Actually, Max, your brother's partly right. That deep, upside-down shovel on a track hoe is called a bucket. It has long teeth on it to break up the ground. Watch how it digs upward toward the machine, then swings its big arm or boom around, and finally releases its load by tipping the bucket over the dumping point. 
The tracks on track tread so it won't sink, right Harry? Yup, those wide heavy tracks are slower than rubber wheels, but by spreading the weight they're more stable on mud and loose dirt. You know boys, track hoes are also called back hoes. Because of the way the bucket pulls back, like a hoe, when it's digging. It looks like the track hoes are passing dirt to each other. Give that man a lollipop! Exactly, Alex. The dirt from the lower part of the hole is brought to a higher point by the track hose. Then the top track hose swings its huge bucket all the way around and drops the load into a waiting dump truck. That enormous bucket can hold almost a ton of dirt. Look, the bucket's almost as big as the entire dump truck. Maybe it's just a small dump truck. Hey, who's calling me small? Who said that? Whoops, I forgot to tell you, boys. When you travel with me, lots of amazing things can happen. Like construction equipment can talk, even dump trucks. Yeah, I can talk. Now, who called me small? Was it you, Pipsqueak? Uh, sorry, Mr. Dump Truck. Gotta watch what you say around here. Oh, he's just a little grouchy because he's been working so hard, Alex. Let's go over and see the truck bath. Truck bath? Big dump trucks have to go through a tire bath before they leave a construction site. That's so they won't drop rocks and chunks of packed dirt from their tires onto the roadway where they could damage cars. Safety is always the first concern on construction sites. Like we're in our hard hats, Harry? That's right, Alex. Hey, put me down, put me down. Another piece of talking equipment? Ouch! I said let me go, you big bully! Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Looks like that tower crane's taking the settling torch somewhere it doesn't want to go. Wow, that tower crane can practically touch the sky! It's more than 260 feet high, Alex. It takes a day just to erect the tower itself, using other smaller cranes. That cross piece is called the runway. A trolley glides along its length, hoisting up to 16,000 pounds on steel cables. That's equal to the weight of eight African elephants. Okay, down, boy, down. Hey, you with the white hot hat, come over here and release these cables. Don't just stand there, do something. <laughs> hey, Harry, they're setting up the pile driver over there. What's a pile driver? Well, let's go see. Hi, kids. Hi, Harry. Uh-oh. He's talking, too. I'm Pete the Pile Driver. Let me tell you a little about myself. Uh, Pete, just tell us what's going on now. Oh, well, the ground men here are guiding my steel form or support cage into place, which will keep the pile from moving around when I slam into it. Piles are long, thin pieces of steel. They form a strong base or foundation for big buildings and bridges. Are you part of a crawler crane? Hmm, I'm attached to a crawler crane, Max. But my pile driver mechanism is like a king-size hammer. It's connected near the top of the crane's tall boom. Then the men put the pile under me and whammo! I can drive that pile six inches at a time, even into hard rock. I'm one powerful dude. Be careful, mister. Don't worry, Alex. I won't hit him. He's just getting ready to remove the hoisting belt from the pile and pull the steel form clear. Then he'll set up another pile for me to whack. It's fun. Thanks for visiting with us, Pete, and happy hitting. Anytime, Harry. And boys, if you ever want me to clobber something for you, just stop by. Happy to help out. Thanks, Pete. Bye. Okay, guys, next stop, an auger driller. That thing weird looking. The auger driller bores holes into the ground for well casings and pipes. Bottom part looks like a big screw. That's the screw section of the drill bit, Max. And it's huge, 16 inches across. The straight part is called the shank. It turns around and around, connected to the main machine by a strong gripping jaw called the chuck. It's like Dad's hand drill at home, but a thousand times bigger. Yep. And look how the operator sits at the side where he can monitor the machine, work the controls, and watch the drilling all at the same time. Hey, here comes my favorite part. When the drill gets clogged up with crushed rock and dirt, the operator pulls it out of the hole, swings it to the side, 
and by reversing the direction of the drill, presto, it's clean. Oh man, can we say that again, Harry? Sure, here's instant replay. The magic way. Then it's back into the hole where the auger can dig as far down as 60 feet deep. But we won't wait for that. Why don't the three of us go see a clam digger? That thing digs for clams? They just call it that, Alex, because the bucket opens and closes like a clamshell. What's it doing anyway? Looks like the clam digger is removing sand, silt, and mud from the access shaft of a tunnel. The ground men guide its big jaws into the center of the hole. The clam digger is attached to a crane, too. That's right, Max. Cranes have lots of uses on a construction site because they're so good at lifting heavy things to high places. Yeah, that stuff's gross. It really is messy, Alex. That's why the clam digger is such a useful tool. I have an idea. Let's go see some other ways that cranes are used on construction sites. Like here. Now that clam digger is definitely catching clams. There might be a few in there, Alex, but actually this clam digger is dredging out a channel for passing boats. Dredging? That means it's making the river deeper so boats won't hit the bottom when they float through. Right, Max. The barge next to the crane will be loaded with wet sand, silt, and debris until it's full. Then tugboats will pull it to a place where the muddy mix can be dumped safely. Wow! Only a crane could hoist a heavy metal platform like that up to a tall bridge. You got that right, pal. Nothing like a crane for lifting and lowering. Me and my crane friends can do it all day long. And we never get tired. Hey, listen to this. Let's sing it, boys. bucket on that crane over there. Hey, you spotted a dragline bucket, Max. Sometimes big digging machines like that crane are just too heavy to travel over very wet or soft soil. Even with their wide track tread spreading the weight? Even so. You mean they could sink and disappear and never be seen again? I wouldn't go that far, Alex. But they might get stuck, and that would mean using other machines on the construction site to pull it out. Instead, they use a crane with a drag line to dig up the wet soil. The workers attach the enormous drag line bucket to the crane boom by a cable. Then the crane operator casts the bucket far out in front. Like fishing? Sort of like fishing, Alex. Then he reels the bucket in, letting it drag slowly along the cable line, gulping up dirt as it goes. 
The drag line is designed to fill itself as it's pulled across the ground. And when it's full, the crane man just lowers the front end and the bucket's empty. Boy, there's about a hundred ways you could use a crane. Hey guys, don't say anything mean about this dump truck. Remember what happened the last time? <laughs> That's called an articulated dump truck because the cab part, where the driver is sitting, can move independently of the dump bed where the dirt is carried. It's easier for an articulated dump truck to maneuver over loose sand and difficult terrain like you see here. Let's watch it back up and dump its heavy load. I had a toy dump truck once that looked just like that one. But I dropped it in the creek behind our house. Yeah, and you cried for hours. Did not. Did too. Hey, hey, calm down, guys. You don't want to miss this neat backhoe working together with the off-road dump truck. How come we see one of those backhoes at almost every place we go? Good question, Alex. Practically all construction involves some form of digging or earth moving. The backhoe is able to dig tons of dirt quickly and efficiently. The less time it takes, the more money a construction company can save. And that's why they bring a backhoe to almost every work site. That dump truck will be back for another load later. Do you know him, Harry? No, not unless he's another construction genie. Well, looks like the dump truck and backhoe are finished working together for now. The backhoe's raising its bucket high into the air and creeping along on its steel track searching for the next digging spot. I think I hear a little kid's voice calling. Mommy, where are you, Mommy? Hey, look over there. It's a baby front loader. Has anyone seen my Mommy? Maybe if I wave my arm, she'll see me. Oh, Mommy, it's Baby. I'm looking for you, Mommy. Over here, honey. Mommy has to move a big boulder so we can build a road through here. Uh, uh, don't get too close now. Someday you'll have a big six-yard bucket like mine and weigh as much as I do, more than 11 tons. But you'll have to practice maneuvering with your tires in your bucket first. Watch how Mommy lifts and lowers her bucket and scoops up all the dirt. Now run along and play with your cousin, the backhoe loader. That beepy front loader is so cute. <laughs> yeah, and he looks like he's a fast learner, too. Hi, cousin. What you doing? Hi, baby. I'm just using my backhoe here to dig a trench. Special control levers move the cylinder arms that tilt my bucket. With gentle handling of those control levers, the driver can get me to reach way out. And pull way back in on that packed soil. A quick turn to the side, and my bucket's empty. Using a light touch, I can even push big logs out of the way with my nose. Hey, I want to try that. Why don't you follow me across this mud puddle instead? My fat tires and deep treads, I'll never get stuck. 
And each wheel operates independently, so my tires can even lift off the ground, and I'll still move forward. <laughs> That's a funny trick, cousin. Backhoe front loader machines like me are found on every construction site, because we're so versatile, fast, and maneuverable. You know, guys, all this big machinery can be very dangerous. So be smart and safe. Never ever play near a real construction site. And if anyone except your mother or father asks you to go to a construction site, just tell them Hard Hat Harry says no way! And just like the baby's mama, my front shovel can push or carry lots of dirt in one gulp. Whoops! Looks like some real loose soil ahead. I might start spinning my wheels. Hey, let's go take a look at the forklift over there. Is it left of forks? <laughs> Uh-oh, nobody's driving that thing. The driver's on the other side, Max, under that steel cage that protects him from falling debris. Here he comes now. The driver moves the machine as close to the drop point as he can. Then he extends or telescopes the long fork arm as much as 40 feet. The wooden planks are sitting on the two long forks, and the ground man uses hand signals to help the driver position the load. Gently now, fellas. Harry, I think the driver wants to talk to us. Gosh darn it, I just realized I forgot my lunch. Let's get out of here, guys. We don't want to hang around with a hungry construction worker on the loose. I want to show you some more off-road dump trucks. Somehow I just knew I was going to see a backhoe working with that dump truck. Like I said before, if there's serious digging going on, you can be sure there's a backhoe nearby. And a monster dump truck, too. I saw an off-road dump truck in a book once that had eight-foot-high tires. It's true. Those are some of the biggest trucks on Earth and can carry up to 240 tons. They're not allowed to travel on highways because their heavy weight could crack the pavement. This one here has wheels as tall as you, Max, and the rear bed, or dump box, can hold 38 tons, or 76,000 pounds. And once he dumps his load, that monster bulldozer comes in to make the ground flat and level for the builders. That's called grading. Max, you've got some real smart brains under that hard hat. But can you guys tell me how wide that front pusher blade is? As wide as a car? Close, Alex. It's 12 feet across, and the dozer's rugged diesel engine packs a walloping 285 horsepower. I never saw so much messy mud and dirt in my whole life. And the best part is, you let us plan, and Harry, you are the best. <laughs> Don't mention it, Alex. That dump truck has a steel bed extender to keep rocks from falling on the driver's cab. Right again for 500 points and a trip to Disneyland. And I recognize that thing. It's another heavy-duty track hole. Amazing! We now have two winners for the Disneyland Dream Vacation. But can anyone tell me the name of the mechanical part that tilts the bucket up and down? <laughs> Time's up! It's called a tilt cylinder, and now I go to Disneyland! Yay, for me! You're crazy, hard hat Harry. Oh, oh, watch this. When the truck bed is full, the track hoe operator taps the load with his bucket to let the dump truck know it's okay to pull away. No way, that's cool. You know, dump trucks move too slow for me. You boys don't mind if I just speed things up a little bit, do you? <laughs> <laughs> There's another kind of dump truck. Yeah.
Yeah, and there's always a backhoe. These are called 100-ton dump trucks, Max. They have long, rectangular dump boxes. You can recognize them because the dump beds look a lot like railroad freight cars. Whoa, check that out! The backhoe is actually pushing the dump truck along to give it a head start. Uh, I can do it. I'm a strong dump truck. I know I can do it. Oh, maybe me and my dump truck buddies can sing our favorite work song. Ready, boys? Fill me up and tap my load. Let me know when it's time to go. I join my buddies down the road. We'll be back for our next load. We are the dump trucks. We love to dig some dirt. We are some dump trucks. I'll be back. We are some one hundred ton dump trucks. Yeah. We are some one hundred ton dump trucks. Yeah. We are some one hundred ton dump trucks. Hasta la vista, bajo. I think they need a truck bath here too, Harry. Those dump trucks trash this street. They have special street sweepers to do the job instead, Max. I love to sweep. I love to sweep. Give me a street to sweep to sweep. Oh, isn't sweeping so much fun? I get to turn my big brushes round and round, spinning and spinning, making the streets so clean and neat. La 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 la. La 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 la. Hey you, dump truck, stop! I just finished sweeping there. Stop, I said. What do you think you're doing? Go back! back. Uh-oh, someone's in trouble. Well, now I think it's time to see something really concrete. I give up. What is it? I'm a concrete pumper, friend. Once my 110-foot boom is fully extended using that remote control unit, I'm going to pump concrete. It takes almost 15 minutes just to unfold my boom, which holds the pumping hose. Those four large legs sticking out from my truck are called outriggers. I use them for stability so I won't tip over when I'm pumping. Here comes a ready-mix concrete truck. It's about time, because that's where I'm going to get my concrete from. Where you been, sister? Oh, just beaning along. I'm going to pull up close enough to pour my pre-mixed concrete into your rear hamper. Watch my chute come out. Ready, aim, fire! Concrete is made from sand, gravel, water, and cement. I mixed the concrete together while I was driving over here, simply by spinning the thick mixture in my colorful barrel-shaped drum. My drum never stops turning. So the concrete goes from the ready-mix truck into the pumper's hamper and then gets pumped through the hose connected to the boom over to those men building that wall across the field. You got it, Max. Then the concrete worker pulls my snaking hose along the wooden mold and positions the hose exactly where he needs the concrete. When he gives me the signal, I take a deep breath and blow that concrete out at a stupendous rate of 70 cubic yards an hour. That's fast. Who are you waving to, Alex? That concrete man with the red hard hat. He looks a little like our Uncle George, doesn't he, Matt? Hey, I have an Uncle George, too. Last I saw, he was charming snakes in Kathmandu. Your uncle is a snake charmer? That's right. Wow, I don't think our uncle even likes snakes. When will the concrete on the new wall be dry, Mr. Pumper? It'll be hard enough to walk on in just four hours but it takes almost 28 days for a concrete to dry rock solid. There's another concrete truck and it has a really long chute. Pouring concrete into that shallow ditch doesn't require the big concrete pumper. 
A simple concrete truck with an extra long chute can get the job done. The driver can control the direction and height of the chute from inside his cab. With the chute all the way out, that concrete truck looks a lot like a fat old elephant. <laughs> <laughs> If you boys don't mind, I think I'll sit down and rest with some of my hard hat buddies over here. I have a few stories I want to share with my buddies here. Hey, another awkward driller. Not awkward driller, Alex. Auger driller. A-U-G-E-R. Oh, whatever. Here comes that neat cleaning part. And watch what the workers put into the hole. It's a steel pile like the kind you saw a while back, but a little shorter. Here, the ground men are letting the backhoe drop the pile into the hole. Then the backhoe bucket is lowered onto the pile and pushes it down even farther. Hey, a mini concrete mixer, and they're pouring the concrete into a backhoe bucket. Here comes that backhoe with a bucket full of concrete. Don't spill, Mr. Backhoe. Into the hole that concrete will go to make the support pile stronger and stable for the new building they're going to erect here. We've seen backhoes do everything today. This one even delivers concrete. Wait, off in the distance. What's that I hear? Yes, it's an impact hammer. Okay, pal, climb up here. And don't forget to wipe off your boots first. I don't want any dirt on the floor of my new cab. Good. Now get in. This impact hammer is a tough guy. Now, let's see. Where's a nice hard piece of rock that I can pulverize? Hmm. Oh, there's one. The impact hammer is connected to a track hoe. It takes two men to attach the long pointed impact bit, which is made of super strong hardened steel. At the end of the day, that guy's brains must be pulverized, too. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet he gets rattled pretty good. A big impact hammer can smash through tons of rocks in minutes. But you know, there's an even faster, noisier, and messier way to break up rock. How would you like to see some real live blasting? Hot dog! Oh, yeah! Now, before any blasting can take place, these odd-looking machines called crawler drills bore small holes in the rock just wide enough for a stick of dynamite and a blasting agent to fit through. The distance between the sticks of dynamite is very important, so the ground technicians guide the drill to carefully chosen locations in the rock, which will allow for the most efficient blast. Then, the slow, closely watched drilling process begins. That white powder you see blowing around is actually finely crushed rock. Careful, mister. That's dynamite. It's okay, Alex. It's not dangerous until he attaches a wire to the top and sends an electrical current to the blasting cap. Right. 
But first, he drops the dynamite into the hole along with the special white blasting gel and packs it all down tight. Blasting is extremely dangerous and very precise. That's why it's always handled by special explosive experts who get lots of training before they conduct their first blast. It's these experts who decide how far the dynamite will be placed from each other and how much will be used. So nobody is going to light a fuse? Only in old western movies, Alex. Today, blasting is a sophisticated science. The actual detonation is done with electrical impulses that travel through those wires leading to the blasting caps. When everybody's at least 500 feet away and the warning horn sounds... It's showtime! Oh, awesome! I've got to see that again! Yeah, please, Harry! Another big bang coming right up! Five, four, three, two, one! The workers wait for the all-clear signal, and after the blast is passed, you gotta clean up the mess. The front end loader and the track hoe can handle that job, preparing the area for a new roadway. Some of this rock you see might even be ground up and used to stabilize the area on the side of the road called the shoulder. As you can see guys, it takes a lot of time and machinery to build just a few hundred feet of roadway. No, just saving the best for last. Let's go! Now, who can tell me what this snail paste piece of road machinery is called? Looks like a snow melter to me. But that's not snow, it's lime. This road reclaimer, soil stabilizer machine, adds white lime to soil to make it hard as rock for the paver. That's called soil stabilizer. It can also gobble up old broken asphalt and lay down a fresh road base ready for the compacting machines. That's called road reclaiming. That road reclaimer has really gigantic tires. And that string machine has a metal tire in the front. Tire? That's my compacted drum. Oh, not again. And it's a girl. I'm Carla, the compactor, Sonny. My grandmother was called a steamroller, but compactor suits me better. It's my job to compress the soil so it's solid for the paver. You must well not, Carla. It's all muscle, Alex. But here's a little secret. My drum has a vibration unit inside so I can compact soil using impact or percussion, not just sheer weight. Wow, Carla, you're a cool compactor. Just doing my job, Alex. It's time to see a big rig, guys. Whoa, that machine looks like something from Star Wars. And it's being driven by Darth Vader. Correction, Jedi Masters. I'm called the Pavement Profiler. I creep slowly along on my three tracks, eating up old asphalt and spitting it out, my long conveyor belt, into bottom drop dump trucks. It takes two people to control me, one on my back and one on the ground. With my 264 tungsten carbide teeth, I can cut a path up to 16 feet wide and 15 inches deep. No one can stop me either, because I weigh 148,000 pounds. And when I'm done gobbling up miles of roadway, my friend, the paver, steps in. His voice was kind of scary. <laughs> Don't mind him. He's always trying to scare little kids. Stick with me. I'm a paver spreader. Watch this. I'm going to splash some wet concrete on that bossy guy over there. Got some in his hair, on his shirt, and pants, too. <laughs> that was fun. 
Okay, back to work. The wet concrete is poured into my hopper, and then I pick it up and pull it into my huge spreader part. Or a dump truck and spread some concrete in front of my paver part. And then away I go. That there is called my oscillating float finisher. I use it to smooth over the new roadway. You know, I can even lay down a 30 inch slab of concrete if I want to. 50 feet wide. And I'm always right behind you, Pava. I'm a curing machine. I straddle above the road surface while my two tanks spray out curing compound onto the new concrete. The curing compound protects and seals the surface so we don't get any cracking when the road dries. I hate cracking. And I'm last but definitely not least. I'm a texturing machine. It's my job to use my long comb to wrap up the new road surface so it won't be too smooth and slippery when vehicles drive over it. Those teeth cut 3 sixteenths of an inch into the fresh concrete. Just enough for skid resistance and rain drainage. It smells like tar around here. Look, there's why. Your nose found an asphalt paver, Alex. It kind of looks like the concrete paver. With some very big differences. The dump truck pours very hot asphalt into the hopper of the discharge conveyor belt. It doesn't look so hot. Oh, it is, my young friend. When the asphalt's put in the dump truck at the hot mix plant, it's 325 degrees. <laughs> 100 degrees hotter than the temperature of boiling water. By the time it gets to me, the asphalt paper, it's still 300 degrees. Just the way I like it. Hot and black. What is asphalt anyway? Well, there's a lot of sand and crushed rock in there, but the main ingredient is actually a byproduct from the refining of oil. This byproduct, known as bituminin, is basically what Alex calls tar. I think I see steam. I guess the asphalt really is hot. The conveyor belt pours the asphalt into the roadway in straight, continuous piles called windrows. That's why I'm called a windrow asphalt paver. <laughs> and I'll bet that corkscrew thing is going to spread the asphalt pile nice and evenly in front of you. Exactly. And then I drive right over it, packing it down into a smooth, level surface. Pretty soon, it's what you kickball players call blacktop. If I lay it down on a good, solid starter surface, then that blacktop will last up to eight years. As old as you are, Max. Hey, that guy's putting his initials in the pavement. <laughs> nah, he's just testing the depth of the surface with the pointed dipstick, Alex. Between two to four inches is the ideal depth for a new layer of asphalt. Did you boys know that 93% of the roads in this country are made from asphalt? It's much cheaper to lay down a blacktop surface than one from concrete. So, except for airport runways and interstate highways that need concrete to support the weight of jet airplanes and heavy trucks, American roadways are basically paved with thousands of miles of asphalt. Thanks to me, of course. <laughs> Look out, coming through, out of the way. Speaking of heavy machines on the roadway, how do you think a bulky bulldozer like me gets to my job? Well, I'll tell you. We use low bed trailers, also called gooseneck trailers. Some of these trailer trucks have 24 wheels and can carry 126 tons of heavy equipment. They ride just 6 to 12 inches off the ground, making it easy for big beasts like me to climb aboard. Once they hitch the truck cab to the gooseneck trailer, I can sit back and relax while the trailer truck does all the work. Ah, uh, nothing like a free ride. Yeah. 
Even the giant profiler travels in this kind of style. Wait a second. It's a backhoe trying to pretend it's an asphalt spreader. I told you backhoe loaders were versatile. Seems like they'll try just about anything once. I guess no one else wanted to get too close to that super hot asphalt. Besides, they don't need a big paver for a little patchwork like this. Oh cool, an Alex size compactor. Be quiet, forklift head. Well, Max and Alex, you boys have learned a lot today about building and repairing roads above ground. Now I thought you might like to see how clever engineers and giant machines build roadways below the surface. Watch. Is that thing going to dig a tunnel? How smart you are. That's a tunnel boring machine, Alex. Huge and heavy, it pushes against rock and dirt from behind, while dozens of sharp spinning blades turn slowly round and round cutting the rock. This tunnel boring machine has a nickname. It's the same name as a tiny little animal that digs tunnels all day long. Any guesses? A rabbit? Close. A groundhog? Not quite. Think really small with bad eyes. A mole! Yes! Lots of people call these gigantic tunnel makers moles. And I'm really a gigantic mole, 35 feet across. Mr. Mole, I think you're just about ready to break through. Uh, 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 I'm through. Look how small these workers are compared to me. Of course, my sharp mole teeth have cut away a lot of rock and dirt. The debris is transported by moving conveyor belt through the center of my belly to miniature train cars. Then it's up to the surface by special elevators. Where the debris is loaded into dump trucks for proper disposal. It's nice to be above ground again. I was getting a little claustrophobic down there. Yeah, and we're really above ground now. From 300 feet below the surface to 30 feet in the air, thanks to a bucket truck. Hmm, looks like our friend is installing new traffic lights at that intersection. They've been fixing the phone lines at our block all week with bucket trucks. I heard one of the workers calling his truck a cherry picker. Yep. These tall telescoping bucket trucks, or cherry pickers, are used for everything from repairing electrical cables to trimming the branches of big trees. Most fire departments have a bucket truck, too, for rescue operations. Like when they see Jake from falling off our neighbor's roof. Jake is our kitten. We thought so. The bucket man is coming down now. He controls the upward and downward movement from inside the bucket. Once he's on the ground, he'll pull up those stabilizer legs. And off he goes to repair more traffic lights. Now who wants to see a big crawler crane lift a big steel girder? I do, I do! You saw crawler cranes like this one earlier today. At the top, it has a 40-foot boom extension called a jib, and there's another 180 feet of boom below that. Without breaking a sweat, this crane can lift more than 250 tons. Wow, that's like three of those huge profiler machines at one time. 
Now the workers use a sturdy grapple hook or block on the end of the crane cable to secure the girder for lifting. Shouldn't the crane operator have his hard hat on? Hey, mister, put on your hard hat. Yeah, you! I think he's concentrating on easing that girder into place, Alex. Maybe you could remind him about his hard hat later on. Like so many other pieces of very heavy equipment, this crawler crane creeps along on its wide steel tracks. Hey, more men in buckets! Correction, Mr. Alex. I'm called a man lift. The men are using me to inspect and repair the underside of that bridge. Another name for a man lift is a self-propelled aerial work platform. Show off! If you don't mind, I'd like to show off a bit too. I can climb to a height of 60 feet in just 20 seconds. And the workers can actually drive and steer me while I'm fully extended in the air, using control knobs on their platform. Okay, down I go. Each section of my boom slides into one another, like a telescope. And as you can see, even though my top speed is only two miles per hour, I'm a lot of fun to drive. getting hungry. Isn't there any food around here? Sure, there's a lunch wagon on the construction site. That's where the workers buy their coffee, donuts, and snacks. Look, that nice lady's waving to us. Ask her if I can have a bite of her sandwich. Harry, can we go see that other crane on top of the bridge? Oh, yeah. Looks like they're laying down long steel support rods. Hear that beeping sound? It's a warning to let you know the crane is backing up in your direction. All construction equipment, even delivery trucks, make that beeping noise when they shift into reverse gear. What kind of crane is that? It's a rough terrain crane. Double show off. And remember what those are called? Outriggers? Stabilizer! You're both right. Those outriggers will stabilize the crane while it hoists those steel rods. The hydraulic feet actually lift the wheels of the crane 12 inches off the ground. Once the ground men attach the hoisting hook to the load, the crane operator takes over. His crane can lift over 35 tons. That's only a seventh of what the crawler crane can pick up. Hey, kid, you calling me a sissy? Oops, a sensitive crane. Look, that crawler crane might be a little stronger than I am but I can get into small spaces the crawler would never think of squeezing into. And my boom has three extensions that reach 125 feet from the cab. Not every crane can do that. I tell you, I get no respect around here. I break my boom all day, lifting and lugging, lifting and lugging, and all I hear are put downs. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. If it weren't for me, this darn highway would never get built. Uh, looks like they're just finishing up over here, boys. Why don't we move on to the wackiest, wildest machine of them all? It's... it's... what is it? That's a very unusual piece of equipment called a barrier mover, Alex. It sucks up those concrete barriers and shifts them from lane to lane, helping to keep traffic running smoothly during road construction. 
The barrier mover is turning that one-lane highway into a two-lane highway in seconds. That's so wicked. Those concrete barriers are hooked up securely together by a metal pin so the barrier mover can zip along at nearly 10 miles per hour. Well, it looks like some of the workers are ready to pack it in for the day. Some of the big machines, like the front loader, help the tired construction workers carry their heavy tools and equipment to a storage area for the night. Where is it going now? After all the smaller equipment is put away, the heavy machines are driven to a central location in the workyard where they'll be refueled and made ready for the early morning work shift. What do we see next, Terry? What you see next, Max, is your own front door. I gotta get you boys home before your mom and dad start worrying. Oh, please, oh, please Harry. Just, just one, one more. more. Please, come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, well, Harry. all right. Just one. Let's see if I can snap up something really exciting. Harry, it's a blast sight again. Whoops, not this exciting. Hang on, boys. We're out of here. <coughs> yeah, we were nearly blown to smithereens. Oh, uh, sorry about that, guys. I'm still a little rusty on my time travel. Um, uh, which one of those monster machines were your favorites? I like the bulldozers, the highway paver, and that humongous dump truck. Wonder what Dad would say if I pulled into the driveway in one of those. <laughs> I like, I like the twirling concrete mixer, the baby loader, and that weird barrier mover. Personally, I like that noisy pile driver. Reminded me of this old stone hammer I once owned in Egypt. Hey, did I ever tell you guys about my first construction job? No. I was working for this guy named Pharaoh, building these pointy things called the Great Pyramids. Well, I had to stack these stones on top of each other, and no one could figure out how to do it. Well, being a construction genie, I knew a trick or two. So I went over to the pharaoh, and I told him that the best thing to do. Oh, hey, Max, could you tuck me in? Sure, Alex. Boy, that was really neat today with Hard and Harry, huh? All that flying around and talking to those monster machines and stuff. It was awesome. You know, I don't think Mom and Dad believed us about Harry. Yeah, sometimes grown-ups are kind of weird that way. You tell them all about the cool magic stuff that happens to you, and they just stare at you like you're crazy. But it happened, right? It happened, Alex. It was real. Hey, Max, you know what the best part is? What's that? <laughs> we still got a whole bunch of wishes left. <laughs> yeah. Hi, kids. It's Hard Hat Harry. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I want you to remember, no matter what, never go anywhere.